Segment Routing On-Demand Next Hop Demonstration. My name is Jose Liste. Traffic engineering represents one of the most important use cases for segment routing. In this brief demonstration, we will demo two of the most recent SRTE enhancements implemented by Cisco. Number one, we will demonstrate how ODN can automatically trigger SRTE policies for traffic testing to VPN destinations. These policies can meet customer or application SLAs such as latency optimization, disjointness, and etc. The policies will be built without any pre-configured tunnels on the ingress PEs, and furthermore, traffic will be automatically steered into the policies without any specific feature such as PBR, PBTS, or static routes. In the demonstration, we will also show an inter-domain SRTE policy. These policies have to be computed by a centralized SR stateful PCE. The highlight of the demonstration is an, a segment routing path computation element server running on an iOS XR device. In the reference topology, we have two ISIS domains on the left and on the right, one and two, running ISIS and segment routing. At the edges of the network, we have a customer for an L3 VPN. As in any typical segment routing design, the picture here represents the loopback addresses for every router in the network, as well as the prefix seed MPLS label assigned for every loopback. For example, device 1.1.1.3 will have a prefix seed assigned by the operator with the value, for example, 16003. The components of the demo include a PCE path computation client, which is sitting on the edges of the domains, router number 3, 7, 22, and 23, as well as the segment routing path computation element server, or SRPCE, residing on router number 10. It is important to say that even though the demonstration will highlight a SRPCE controller sitting in a router connected to the network, this function can reside anywhere in the network. It can be merged with a route reflector, it could be merged as a, uh, in the ASVR router, etc. The key is to guarantee that the devices that have to compute end-to-end -end interdomain policies have complete awareness of the topology. With the current topology, what we have is PCE protocols or PCEP sessions running between the PEs as well as the towards the controller. In addition, the controller also has a BGP session running towards the ASBR5, which is going to be used to propagate the topology prefix links found on the left and on the right domains. From a service perspective, segment routing is only involved with the transport, so there are no changes to the service layer. In this case, the PEs, uh, the same routers acting as PCCs, also have a BGP session for VPN before address family towards the raw reflector node 11. The demonstration will start from a point where a remote CE, uh, CE21 in the picture, advertises a prefix towards the service provider network. In this example, the prefix will be 2.2.2.21. Once the prefix arrives on the PE P22, the service provider knows beforehand that this customer has purchased a low latency service. So any traffic destined to the prefix 2.2.2.21 in this BRF blue must receive low latency. And the way how the operator will propagate that policy across the network is by tagging, this is one example, by tagging the prefix with a, a standard BGP community. For example, we will use um, 100 colon 777. Recall that using BGP communities is just one of the many ways that the service provider can be used to express a policy in the network. Well, the PE will advertise the route towards the raw reflector and subsequently it will make its way to the remote PEs, for example, PE number 3. At this time, the route will arrive with the standard community 
that was set on P22 uh, with the value 100 colon 777. At this point, we will switch to the setup and we will focus primarily on router number three, which is my, my remote PE acting as a PCC, and very briefly as well on my segment routing PC controller or router number 10. Let's go there. We're now sitting next to the router consoles. For easy clarification of the topology, I have a drawing of the topology in the background. In the front, I have the device consoles. We will start by looking at the PCC or router number three. The first element that we will explore is the BGP configuration on the router. The router has a, a BGP session with the raw reflector or node 11 by enabling the BPN before address family. Notice how underneath you have a route policy or RPL policy. I call it ODN match com that is going to match on a number of variables. And if you recall, 10777 is the community that was set by P22. Let's explore the route policy. Here we can view the details of the RPL policy. The RPL policy, as I mentioned, is going to match on the community with the variables A, B, in this case 100 and 777. More importantly, the RPL will actually set a TE attribute set that in this case we call gold. Gold is simply a template that can be configured throughout the network to indicate the behavior that the PCC should have at the time that it receives a BPM before prefix with a community of interest. Let's explore the attribute set called. In gold, as I mentioned, we describe the behavior of the router. In this particular case, we are saying that the router must contact the PCE for path computation. The PCC will be instructed by this template to request a path that is disjoint from another LSP found in the group ID 1. This is how we can achieve disjoinness. In this case, it's even further, it's even requesting no disjoinness. In particular, it's also requesting T metric optimization for the end to end path. Let's have a quick look at the controller. As we mentioned, the PC function is now sitting in an iOS XR router. And if we look at the configuration, it's very simple. A couple of lines of CLI will actually configure the PC function. The IP address 1.1.1.10 is the loopback of this node. The router currently has already PCEP sessions with multiple PEs in the network. As I mentioned in the drawing before, it has a PCE session with 3, 7, 22, 23. Let's have a look at the picture. 3, 7, 22, 23. I mentioned before that the router is learning the topology from the network via BGPLS. Let's have a look at the PCE topology for one of the nodes. I'm going to request the router, the controller, to give me the topology for the device number three. Here we can see how the show PC IPv4 topology is going to describe for me all the elements that were learned by the controller. He knows I have a loopback 1.1.1.3 with the label 16003. If you recall, that is the value that I was portraying earlier in the slides. It also shows that this node has three links, links 0, 1, and 2. And in particular, we are propagating the adjacency seeds from segment routing via BGPLS to the controller. Every link will be assigned to adjacency seeds by segment routing, and we can see how that is happening for link 0. I have two seeds, link 1 and link 2. If you go back to the picture, we can see that the device number three actually indeed has three links. Well, by knowing the entire topology, the PC controller is in a position to compute any path that is requested by the PCCs. 
Back on router number three, let's have a look as to whether there are any tunnels or policies configured on the router. And at this point, the output of show MPLS traffic engineering brief is displaying no tunnels or policies existing on the router. To trigger the ODN sequence, we will be moving to the CE21 and we're going to enable a loopback representing a customer route into the CE that eventually will make it into the operator via PE22. This event will generate the cascade of sequence that will be triggered by uh, ODN behavior. Let's go to the CE. Loopback number two is currently in shutdown. It has the IP address 2.2.2.21. Now we proceed to bring the loopback up, commit the configuration, and by doing that, we know that the route is making its way from C21 to P22 and then through the route reflector to P3. Remember that the P22 is going to set a BGP community that router number three will be matching on. On router, router number three, I I'm going to recall the same command for traffic engineering tunnel brief. And now I have a tunnel or policy call represented by the tunnel TE3. Notice the caret sign, which indicates that this has been a automatically generated policy. If we look at the details of it, we can see that the destination of the tunnel is the IP address 1.1.1.22 which is the far end PE and that the route that the path is dynamic from PCE and it currently has two segments in it to get to it. The device will have to go between 3 and 5, the traffic between 3 and 5 and then between 5 and 22. Let's refer to that in the picture. 3 to 5 and 5 to 22. Also notice how the policy or the tunnel is also being assigned a binding seed of 24,007. The binding seed is one of the critical concepts that will allow me to steer traffic into the policy. As you will see later, the FIB will be programmed to send traffic that arrives with this binding seed directly into the tunnel. And this is how we are going to per achieve automatic steering of traffic for BPN destinations without having to configure PBR, PBTS, or any auto route announce functionality. It is important to mention that if I were to look for IGP reachability to the destination of this tunnel, which is 1.1.22, you will see that there is actually no route found in the ISIS process for that destination. This is per design. We are configuring multi-domain networks that will allow the operator to maintain a reasonable size IGP on a particular area of the network. And we are building end-to-end -end connectivity without having to redistribute prefixes across the domains. Let's have a look at the forwarding. And we do a show CEF for the VPN prefix that we just enabled. Notice how we have a brand new behavior in the FIB where we can now recurse via a label. And what it means in this case is that the any traffic testing towards 2.2.2.21 in BRF Blue is going to recurse via the next hop label 24007. If I go up, you may recall 24007 is the binding seed for the tunnel. So with this, at this point, we are automatically streaming traffic thanks to the binding seed onto the tunnel tree. Let's now prove that we can actually see the traffic flowing over this policy. At this point, we're going to go to the CE on the left, CE number 2, and we're going to issue a trace route command from 2 towards the CE21.
We can see how the trace route is successful and it follows the links 3 or the nodes 3 to 5, 5 to 22, 22 to 21. 3, 5, 22, 21. So effectively, we are seeing how the policy came up and how the traffic is automatically steered into the policy. In the last part of the demonstration, we're going to proceed to remove the loopback from being advertised on node 21. So we're going to roll back the configuration that we did earlier. So the loopback number 2 is going to go back to shutdown state. We go back to uh, PCC number 3. We run the Ceph command to see if the Ceph has an entry for that prefix. And it no longer has the prefix, so BGP has already cleaned up the routing table, and therefore the prefix is removed from the rib and the fib. At this point, we're also going to check whether there are any, any policies left on the router as a result of the withdrawal of the route. And here we can see how the, the policy or the tunnel is no longer needed. The BGP route was withdrawn, the CEF was cleaned up, and subsequently there is no more policy or tunnel towards that destination. Hence, we refer to this functionality as on-demand next hops. The tunnel was brought up only when it was required. Let's now move to the conclusions. In this demonstration, you learn three things. You learn how segment routing on demand next hop is a capable of triggering automatic policies towards VPN destinations. The example that we covered today was L3 VPN, but it would equally cover layer 2 VPNs as well. You learn how segment routing ODN can automatically enforce steering of traffic onto the policies without any performance penalties or performance implications or configuration burdens of having to do PVR, PBTS, or static routes. And finally, you learn how an iOS XR device can be used in the network as a stateful segment routing PCE that can compute end-to-end -end paths across inter-AES or inter-domain scenarios. For more information about this demonstration and any other material on segment routing, we suggest you visit www.segment-routing.net. Don't forget, if you have any questions, want to get involved, want to share your impressions or your use cases, please send us an email at ask-segment-routing at cisco.com. Thanks for watching.